In the Kupiansky direction, positional confrontation in the area of Sinkovka and Petropavlovka does not stop. The AFU continues to disperse an information campaign claiming that one of the main attacks of the Russian armed forces will in the near future be delivered in the Kupiansk area through Sinkovka. At the same time, it would be much more successful for the RF armed forces to try to break through the defenses of the armed forces of Ukraine on the Zagorykovka, Timkovka, Ivanovka, Kislovka line. In the Avdivsky direction, the Russian armed forces continue to fight in the area of Pervomaisky and wastewater treatment facilities. In particular, footage of successful destruction of a few armored vehicles by FPV drones was shown on the internet. In addition, it was reported that a Ukrainian armed forces commander was destroyed in the Krasnogorovka area. In the Donetsk direction, fighting took place west of Marinka. Despite the positional nature of the fighting in this sector, according to unconfirmed reports, the Russian armed forces were able to advance in the direction of Georgievka. However, due to the lack of personnel, it is not possible to establish the exact configuration of the front. In the Uglodar direction, the main battles took place in the Novomikolovka area where Russian troops were able to thwart several a few attempts to transfer reinforcements to the south of the settlement. In addition, large-caliber artillery is actively working on a few trenches in the area of forest plantations, reducing their defense to zero before the subsequent assault by the Russian armed forces. Attacks were also carried out on Ukrainian armed forces clusters and facilities in Konstantinivka west of Elizabetovka, northwest of Dobrovoli, and in Vadiana. In the Vrimaevsky direction, positional battles continue along the entire line of contact. Footage of an artillery hit on an AFU dugout in the Staromayersky area was shown on the internet. In addition, it was reported that the Ukrainian armed forces' stronghold southwest of Ravnopal was suppressed, as well as the accumulation of manpower and equipment in Malinovka. In the Zaporizhzhia direction, Russian assault groups, under the cover of artillery, continued to put pressure on the AFU in the Verbovoy area. Meanwhile, the Russian armed forces launched strikes against identified targets of the armed forces of Ukraine who were conducting reconnaissance in the forest belt area. After the fire defeat, the AFU retreated to the positions he occupied. In the Kherson direction, the situation remains the same. Positional battles are taking place in Krinky and on the islands, but due to deteriorating weather conditions, a few activity remained minimal. Nevertheless, Ukrainian formations are making unsuccessful attempts to transfer reinforcements to the left bank of the Dnieper, but the ice-bound river and the active work of UAVs on the ground make it difficult for the a few to move. It is worth noting that recently a large number of video materials have been published confirming the destruction of a few equipment and artillery on the right bank of the Dnieper. In addition, today Russian artillery struck the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces in the right bank part of the Kherson region. In particular, the positions of Ukrainian formations in Kherson, Sadovoy, and Antonovka were hit. It would seem the IL-22 and the A-50 were struck by friendly fire. This, apparently, continues to be a problem for the Russian armed forces, which sometimes inflicts heavier losses on themselves than a few fire. It would seem that in the modern era, after almost two years of hostilities, a network center should already be developed, the uninterrupted operation of friend or foe. Responders and interaction between air defense and aerospace forces, which are actually a single branch of the military, should already be established. But apparently not completely. If the information about friendly fire yesterday in the sky on the Sea of Azov is correct, and the Ukrainian armed forces persistently chalk up the planes to their own account, 
then this incident will be the next in a series of mishaps for Russian Aerospace Forces aviation by fire from their own air defense systems. And it has been confirmed that the IL-22 was successfully landed after being hit. The U.S. fears the use of nuclear weapons by Russia. The Sunday Times reports. That is why the Americans do not want to send long-range weapons to Ukraine. The same policy is being pursued in Germany. There they declare the need to limit the range of missiles so that they cannot be used on the territory of the main part of Russia. Olaf Scholz, the German Chancellor, also fears an escalation of the conflict and the possibility that Kiev will use more powerful weapons, including nuclear ones.